writing them down, yeah, you probably followed what you were doing, but let's just work through <clears throat> a couple of examples so you see what exactly I mean by each of these steps, uh, turning the words into action. So on that worksheet that I gave you, um, I do believe that we're going to start with number one. Okay. <clears throat> So, number one is 125m cubed plus one, and we need to factor that uh, completely, okay? We need to factor that completely. So, we need to set it up. We have a binomial times a trinomial, so you need a regular set of parentheses and one that's a little bit longer, okay? Uh, we always look for a GCF first. There clearly is not going to be a GCF between 125 and 1 because 1 doesn't have a GCF with anything other than 1, and that doesn't really count. All right, so we skip the GCF part. We need to take the cube root of these terms right here. So the cube root of 125 is 5. You can use the list up here. You can use your calculator or whatever you need to do. Okay, the cube root of m cubed is m. Okay, what do we cube to get m cubed? Well, that would be m. And the cube root of 1 is 1. Any root of 1 is 1. The fourth root, square root, cube root, 1 is that special number. All right, so I'm not going to put anything between them yet. I'm going to save that for the very end. Okay, so our next step said that we take our first term right here that we've put inside of our parentheses, the 5m, and we're going to square it, and that goes in the first blank of the trinomial. So 5m squared is 25m squared. You square the coefficient and you square the variable. Then we take our second term, 1, we square it, and it is the very last term. And then the middle term, we multiply the 5m times the 1, and that becomes our middle term right here. And then we use the acronym SOAP. Same, so whatever sign was right here is going to be the sign in your first set of parentheses. Then we do the opposite sign, so in this case it's negative. And then the last one is always positive. And that is factored completely. Okay. Um, now, a lot of times it will look like uh, you could factor that trinomial, okay? Sometimes it looks very, very close, uh, but that trinomial will never be factorable, okay? It is never factorable. Um, in order to solve for that variable, you would have to use the quadratic formula, you would have to use completing the square or graphing or something like that. It's not factorable, all right? Um, and like with any type of factoring, you can check your work by multiplying it back out. Now, obviously here, that's a little bit more tedious, multiplying a binomial times a trinomial, but that is always a um, um, word just totally left me. Um, resource is not the right word, but it works. Um, a resource that you can use. Um, strategy. Strategy. That's the word I was looking for. Okay. Um, anyways, so that's that. Let's look at number two. Okay. Number two, similar scenario. It just looks a little bit different because our variable comes second. That's not a big deal, okay? Now, if it really, really bothers you, you can rewrite that, okay? You can change the order. Uh, just be aware that the answer choices, if this were a multiple choice question, the answer choices, they wouldn't change the order. So I'm just going to leave it as it is, okay? Uh, first of all, I do want to look for, is there GCF between 8 and 27? There is not. So I just need to jump straight into taking their cube roots. The cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of 27 is 3. And that one had the variable. So in my second set of parentheses, I need to square the 2. That goes in the first spot. Square the 3m. Square the 3 and the m. So 9m squared goes in the second place. Multiply them together and get 6m. That goes in the middle. So, same, it, the first sign was positive, so it's positive, negative, positive. Same, opposite, always positive. Okay, now, once like number three I tend to throw people for a loop, just because it, it's like, well, what, what am I taking the cube root of? It really is, it's very simplistic. 
um, but it, it does tend to trip people up. Okay, the cube root of m cubed is just m. The cube root of 1 is 1. Square the m, m squared, square the 1, you get 1. Multiply them together, you get 1m. We don't really want a coefficient of 1, so I'm just going to put an m. Again, it was positive, so positive, negative, positive. Now, let's look at the number 7. Okay? Number 7, we've got 256x cubed plus 108. Well, neither 256 nor 108 are perfect cubes. So, but it looks like, I mean, looking at that, I should know that this is probably a perfect cube, but these are not perfect cubes themselves. So that's a dead tip off that there's a GCF there. Okay? That means that there's got to be a GCF there if they're asking me to factor this. So, um, I don't know, for some reason 4 sounds good to me. Let's see if 4 works. Uh, yep, when we divide 256 by 4, we get 64. When we divide 108 by 4, we get 27. 64 and 27 are perfect cubes. Okay, so we start by taking out that 4. When you factor out a GCF, you have to leave it in front of your parentheses. Okay, it doesn't just disappear. If it does, you have changed your problem. So we've got to keep that 4 in front. We take out the GCF. Now we can factor the sum of perfect cubes. The cube root of 64 is 4. That one had the x. The cube root of 27 is 3. I went ahead and put the plus in there. Just have it. Okay. Square the 4x, so square the 4 and square the x. Square the 3 to get 9. Multiply the 4x times 3 to get 12x. That goes in the middle. So same is a positive, opposite, negative, always positive for the last. And that's what your final answer should look like. All three pieces, monomial, binomial, trinomial. Okay, let's do one more like that, 4x cubed plus 4. 4 is not a perfect cube. Okay, 4 is not a perfect cube. Uh, well, guess what? The GCF is 4. When we take out the 4, we're left with x cubed plus 1. And I'm pretty sure we just factored this a second ago. We've got x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. I think we just had a different variable. Okay. Okay, all of those were the sum of perfect cubes. The only difference with the difference of perfect cubes is that there's a minus sign in there. It doesn't change anything about our process. It's just going to change the way that we assign our signs. Okay, so number 13. Skip a few here. I left some for examples for you to do, or practice for you to do. Uh, number 13, okay. Uh, 1 is perfect cube, 125 is perfect cube, there's no GCF going on there. So the cube root of 1 is 1. Cube root of 125 is 5. And the cube root of x cubed is x. Square the 1. Square the 5x. Multiply the 1 times the 5x. This time, the same sign, we're going to start with a negative, which means both of them in the trinomial are positives. Now, this is an example of one where even though the variable comes second, even if it bothers me, I'm not going to move it. Okay, I'm not going to try and rewrite this as negative 125x cubed plus 1 just because things are going to get a little, little weird when I'm trying to take the cube root and it's just more difficult than it needs to be, okay? Um, so don't, don't try and change the order of that one, just leave it the way it is. 
Okay, let's look at number 14. 216, 125. Those are both perfect cubes. So we can jump right in. 6a and 5. Square the 6a, you get 36a. Square the 5, get 25. Multiply the 6a times 5 to get 30a. Same as negative, opposite's positive, last one's always positive. Yes, I sound like a broken record, but hopefully if I say it enough, it will stick. Because people tend to forget these. Okay. And let's skip down to number 20. Okay, let's skip down to number 20. 375 minus 648 plus, or excuse me, 648 x cubed. I don't know why I said plus. Maybe I was looking at it crooked. Or maybe I'm just that tired. All right, 375, 648, not perfect cubes. Okay, not perfect cubes. Uh, so 375 is related to a perfect cube. 125 times 3 is 375, if I am not mistaken. Let's see if 648 is also divisible by 3, and it is. So our GCF here is 3. We end up with 125 minus 216. In case you haven't noticed, a lot of these numbers are showing up over and over again. Uh, when, you, when you get up to perfect cubes, they only go so high because the numbers get big very, very quickly. So that's a little bit of a comfort, right? You don't have as much to worry about. So square the 5, 25, square the 6, 36x squared, multiply them together. Started with a negative, opposite is positive. Last one's always positive. And that's your final answer.